Wondering what life is really like on Canada's wild and crazy West Coast? This podcast is all about the people, the places, and Vancouver Island time. Together, we'll explore this island paradise, a combination of ocean, city, and country living. We'll meet the fabulous locals such as the Fudge Fairy and the Chicken Lady who have chosen Victoria and Vancouver Island as their home. And we'll learn what makes this place unique and special to those who live here. And now, your host of Vancouver Island Time, Jane Johnston. Hi, everybody. It's Jane Johnston from Vancouver Island Time. I'm here with Wendy Burton, and we're going to be talking about the Sydney area and what that's like to live in, as well as we're going to be focusing on her company, World Tree COP, or she liked to say it, worldtreecop.com. So we're going to talk about what uh, the COP means, uh, but first we're going to talk about why she chose Sydney, where she's from originally, and how she ended up here. So uh, tell us a bit about yourself, Wendy. Oh, thank you, Jane. Um, well, a little bit about myself. Um, I moved here recently from, actually it was three years ago, from the Okanagan Valley. And although I did grow up in Victoria, so it felt like coming home. There's just something about the island when you get off the ferry that you just go, ah, you get to breathe. And what you should know is um, we can actually see a great view from where she's living right now. So there's there's a lot of history around uh, this view. Okay. So. Yeah. And uh, when I moved here, I lived in North Saanich, but I continually tried to come to Sydney. I love Sydney. I think this is the most adorable little hamlet. So the fact that I was able to get a house in Sydney, I am tickled beyond belief if you have not been to Sydney you need to come here it has um, beautiful little walkways all along the ocean some fabulous little restaurants um, best gluten-free chip uh, fish and chips <laughs> I didn't even know you could do that <laughs> fish and chips I know even gluten-free uh, uh, clearly I'm gluten-free um, but uh, best uh, crab mac and cheese which is at Harrow's uh, a nice little restaurant pub on the water called the Surly Mermaid. So it, um, and I think one of the things that drew me to this place when I wanted to live in Sydney is um, in the spring going into the fall, they have the Sydney Farmer's Market, which personally myself, I think is one of the best on the island. It is my go-to. I do not plan anything for a Thursday evening except for going to the market. I get my little tisket a tasket and I walk up and down and I just buy all produce. Everything's local. It's beautiful. It really is the most amazing place. And they uh, totally block off the main street for that they do the, uh, a beacon avenue they block it off and they have entertainment they have food trucks it, it it's an event and every comes out everybody comes out with their family their pets like it really is a um a nice entertainment evening the weather's beautiful cool breeze off the ocean walking along the boardwalk You'll find lots of people are out with their dogs playing frisbee. In the summertime, the big park, and I don't know yet what the big park is called. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but it's got this great big huge bandstand. And there's live music and there's lots of places. Awesome place, by the way, to see the fireworks. Is that where, uh, down by the ocean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's actually, and right there is Harrow's Restaurant. It's got a big, beautiful patio, as does just across it, which is the beacon landing restaurant i'm a tad of a foodie i can t i can tell <laughs> we're talking about all aspects of sydney but we're starting with the food i like i like the uh greek restaurant on third oh yes yeah uh, Z uh Zatiki, Z i don't even know what it is Zatiki. yes but there's also a great um sushi restaurant and um the 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 dress shops little gems that you you really must take a walk up and down Beacon Avenue because they've got some pretty classy um, ladies shops they even have a great men's shop there is of course we have to do our Starbucks but uh, several different little coffee shops that have character it is a, um, a beautiful place to enjoy so one of the things that's unique about uh, Sydney compared to the rest of Victoria is it's quite flat so as a result, we actually get a lot of seniors living here. And I remember coming for lunch with my daughter and she noticed how many <laughs> push, pushy things <laughs> there were, <laughs> which, um, you know, 
uh, and I, you do notice a lot of gray hair in the restaurant, but I don't think, I think the demographic is changing now and there's a lot of new construction near the airport. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're, what's also unique about Sydney is literally if you work here, it would only take you an hour and a half to get to Vancouver because it's just a ferry ride away. Plus, we're right at the airport, so if you're working elsewhere, um, like you travel a lot. Yes, and actually because I do travel a lot, the idea that I am like 10 minutes from the ferry, six minutes to the airport, it really, um, it, it works for my lifestyle. And even for people coming to visit, you know, I can just go pick them up, they walk on the ferry, come on over. Uh, it's it's fantastic for us all to travel in the company um, a lot of times people will usually stay at my house overnight and then we all get up in the morning and board the plane. So it really does work. And I, I think the thing that I love now about living here is that I'm really going to enjoy the walking lifestyle mm. because everything I need is in walking distance in Sydney. So, and also if you're American or you want to visit the islands, we're going to show you the view that she has, which is just stunning. Um, but you can go to the Anacortes Islands Yes, I actually, and it's just, just down the way here. I haven't done it yet, but uh, this weekend when I was moving, and I keep seeing the ferries now go back and forth, it's like, I have got to go do that. So, yeah, I hear Friday Harbor is really nice. Oh, yeah, I actually have too. Is that where you catch it then? I did not know that. Yeah, it's one of the places. So it stops a few ways, a um, few different islands on the way, and then I think they actually have a float plane starting up. Um, also going to to the islands. I'm not I'm not sure about that. Um, so we are. I do have a client who's interested in this area, um, and she was asking me about uh, noise from the airplane. So the they either land east west or west east. So if they're landing east west, they're coming out um, over the strait here. If they land west east, they're coming over the Malahat. I'm just wondering, how do you find the noise? Any plane traffic or anything? I, I know this person has that question specifically yes, for you. Yes. Well, where my house is situated, I actually do um, see the plane, but it's not heavy traffic. Um, for what I've experienced, I notice in the morning up a, a plane will fly overhead, um, you know, a couple of times a day, but I uh, used to live off of the Pat Bay Highway. And so I heard traffic all the time. So to me, having an occasional plane here and there, it really is, it's not a heavy, heavy airplane traffic area. Okay. Um, so what about like in terms of groceries and stuff, where do you go for groceries in this town? I know that there's a grocery store, I think it's a Thrifties right downtown, and then there's a couple up by the highway. Mm -hmm. Are they well stocked? Do they have ethnic foods? Is it good place to go? Actually, all of them are. Um, Thrifties is normally the one that I go to, but it's a well, well stocked grocery store. I haven't been to the Save On Foods yet, but there is the little fairway market that's just on the corner up here, and it is very well stocked as well. And the people are just so friendly here. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. There's also, as far as culture goes, mm -hmm. uh, the Mary Winsmere Center. Oh. And they have lots of great events. And even in the summertime, they've got the, like, the big Lego thing for my grandchildren. They love to come and uh, spend time there. Lots of um, uh, comedy clubs, events. So it's, it's a great location just to get some local uh, culture as well. Yeah, and they also have the uh, aquarium here. Oh, yes, they do have the aquarium. And that's actually just beside um, Harrow's and the Pier Hotel beautiful little aquarium uh, uh, quite informative another thing that they have here is the most adorable little theater little tiny theater it gets quite eclectic type uh, movies in homemade popcorn with um, organic uh, coconut butter they'll serve you coffee tea they'll get you a blanket and and a pillow like it is the most unique experience going to this little tiny theater and it's cheaper than all the other theaters <laughs> okay um do they so do they play contemporary movies or do they play unique movies oh uh, no they they play uh, contemporary and some unique after the theater after the show was over they'll then show you a few previews like not like normally before and they'll ask you they're going to say a couple of previews if you clap really loud they'll bring those movies in <laughs> oh that's a great idea i love it yeah huh 
Um, what about in terms of recreation? What do you do around town here? Is there a place to work out? Um, and I noticed like there's a library um, just east of the, or sorry, north of the downtown. Um, there, big um, places if you want a boat, you can get, you can um, park your boat here and go up island uh, if you want. There's, we have access to the provincial parks on the uh, islands there, which I've done, which were amazing. Yeah, I um, the boat launch here is massive. So and they've got a really nice um, yacht club that's just beside the Surly Mermaid. Um, I have not been to the library yet, um, but they do have some really gorgeous antique style, old fashioned bookstores that you can really go in and wander around. So so at the library I have not been to, and as far as um, exercise, um, I haven't been, I haven't found any gyms yet. Literally, I just moved this past Easter weekend. I came here a lot, but a lot of bikers, um, some nice tennis courts, and I also have just started playing pickleball. So a couple that's <laughs> cute. <laughs> where where pickleball is really a lot of fun, um, and there's a couple of um, uh, uh, courts that are just over by. Um, it's on the other side of the ferry. There's a couple of, oh, and also for the young people, they've got the skateboard um, park. It's just across from the ska- uh, skateboard park. And there's a little tiny um, um, gallery in there as well. And picnic. There's picnic tables all over this little town. And everywhere you walk, people are having picnics. So regarding, let's get back to the dem- demographics. Um, I, there is a high school and a middle school and elementary school around here. Uh, what do you do, notice the demographics of the people downtown? Because although we're, we're kidding um, about uh, the seniors population, it is known for that to be a big retirement community. But I'm just wondering if you notice, like, especially on the market day, is there a great variety? Because I'm sure people with young kids want to know, is this a good place to live in or for them? Even in the three years since I've been on the island, because I I continually would come to Sydney, even in three years I've noticed the demographics have changed. It's getting younger and younger. There's more families. Um, And, you know, there's still, you know, some great senior places. So not to discourage the seniors from coming. And I think what it is is that the traffic isn't heavy here, so there's more they're more comfortable coming here. But it is changing. There was a I heard there was a rumor that like the sidewalks roll up at six o'clock. Well I have arrived and they're not rolling up until nine now. <laughs> oh that's nice. Cause you're here. <laughs> I'm not letting them <laughs> I do find, um, so we come up here, we come up here for the, uh, I say come up because we're up island, it's north of uh, downtown Victoria, Um, but a lot of people are coming up on uh, Thursday nights for the market. What else are they coming up for? Are there any things like um, Canada Day celebrations? Yeah, actually the Canada Day celebration at the the big um, park uh, right by the pier, they have the, um, the music and it, it was packed last year for Canada Day. The fireworks um, were amazing. They got a, a bit interrupted. It was a short fireworks, and we thought that was it. And half the people started to go home, and then they realized they had way more. So, um, yeah, but, it, you know, it, and the music is good, and the people are friendly. It's got a real hometown you know, neighbor, I've with just moving in already, some of the neighbors have come over and said hello and have said welcome to the neighborhood. You know, like that, that's like, this is a Norman Rockwell painting you get to live in. Um, the other thing is the, this is kind of the jumping off point, uh, not only for sailing your own boat to the other islands, but you can take the ferry to other li- islands like Salt Spring Island and, uh, Pender Island and all of those islands. Have you been doing any of that? Um, I I went to Pender Island last summer uh, for my vacation with my children and my grandchildren, and we rented a place over there. It was beautiful, and the ferry ride is so gorgeous. You know, you see lots of uh, you know sea lions and and otters and that sort of thing. Um, haven't seen a whale yet, but I'm, I'm, as soon as I unpack my binoculars, they will be out. And yeah, so there's, there's a lot of events. There's a lot of sailboats. I will say I can sit here and it's like a cluster of them. I'm not sure which one of these islands I look at, but what, what it's called yet. But, um, if you are into sailing, I think Sydney is the place to come to. 
Yeah, because uh, it's protected. It's more protected. So there are quite a few uh, little marinas here that you can uh, park your boat at throughout the year. One person that said said to me um, when they went east to Toronto, the thing they found interesting was it was winter and they didn't see any sailboats. And actually, while we're sitting here, I'm seeing one passing by over there. So anyway, um, so that's a great overview of... Sydney, if you're interested in learning more, you can give me a call. Uh, I'm available through my website at VancouverIslandTime.com or you can visit us at the Briar Hill Group and uh, we'll talk more uh, with Wendy and her business, WorldTreeCOP.com in a moment. Take care and welcome to the neighborhood of Sydney. Vancouver Island Time is brought to you by the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun Victoria, where we bring local expertise and global presence to your property. This episode is sponsored in part by Laurie Frank Mediation. Separation is a difficult and upsetting time for a family. Litigation can make it even harder. Separation mediation is a modern approach to separation. It is a quicker, less expensive option, and separation mediation puts your kids ahead of the fighting. Lori Frank is a family mediator and can help you take the first step towards the next chapter of your life. Contact Lori today for a free consult to learn how separation mediation can work for you and your ex-partner. All right, everybody, welcome back. And I'm here with Wendy Burton with WorldTreeCOP.com. So she handed me this wine glass it's a champagne glass and i'm like what is this so you can see it's actually a living plant it's a little baby plant and this is the introductory plant and and this one here is just a, a actually about a week a week older i'm trying to see if you can see our logo on here it's a week older and this is the empress splendor tree it's the fastest growing tree in the world and um, in this, so it grew that fast in one week. In um, it's in the World Guinness Book of Records as the fastest growing hardwood tree in the world. In its first year, it can reach ten to twenty feet tall, and it captures eleven times more carbon than any other tree. Where is it from originally? Well, you know that's an interesting question because people for many many years actually thought that it was originated in China but it was actually in the early um, or the late 1800s that they discovered the oldest fossils in the world are here in North America really like yes. in Alberta uh, no actually um, it would be in um, the United States Okay, but I think in that center part. Yes, yes, in that center part, yeah. Exactly. So so the roots, no pun intended, actually are <laughs> are from North America. But it was many years ago that the Chinese actually adopted it for themselves. They consider it their most sacred tree. And what World Tree has done is uh, we've created an investment called the Empress Investment where individuals get to actually offset their carbon footprint on the planet by us, on your behalf, planting these fastest growing trees. And we give them to farmers all over the world in the right growing zones. And then in 10 years, when we harvest the lumber, you as the investor get 25% of the revenue from the sale of the lumber. Of course, the farmer, he does all the work, so he actually gets 50%. And then the other 50% is shared with the investor. Or, no, the other 50% oh, okay. is shared between World Tree and the investor. So we each get 25. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so how did you even get into this? Well, I'd have to say I had what Oprah um, would call um, an aha moment when I was introduced probably close to almost 24 years ago now. I was introduced to um, a tree and I literally, I fell in love with a tree. And the more I learned about this tree, the more I realized that the world has to know about it. And so there's a little bit of a joke in the company. We're not sure whether I found the tree or the tree found me. But we've been together now for um, 24 years. And like any relationship, we've had our ups and our downs. 
<laughs> but we weathered it, you know, we branched out a few things and tried a few things. Um, but then, um, you know, ultimately, with inside of what's going on in our world around climate change and Mother Nature, um, you know, and all of I like to say her mood swings, um, we realized we need to, you know, leaves are the lungs of our planet. Without trees, we're not going to have life. You're growing some of these trees on Vancouver Island, yes. right? Groves of trees. That's the yes. word I'm looking for. Yes. Where else in the world are you growing these groves? Because I know, I know you and I know you, you've been traveling around the world quite significantly. So yes. uh, where else? Um, where World Tree has trees planted right now is here on Vancouver Island, which is south of Nanaimo in a place called Cedar. And um, the southeastern states, Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, the um, northwestern states, uh, Washington, Oregon, then um, Costa Rica, oh, best coffee in the world, I got to tell you, is shade grown. And the empress trees absolutely love to be intercropped with uh, the coffee beans. So we've been to Costa Rica. The trees do also grow well in Australia and New Zealand. All the zones in the world that we like to say is seven to, seven to 11. It needs a little touch of a cold because it is a deciduous, as all hardwood trees are. So the leaves will fall to the ground. So you want to make sure that there's at least a little bit of a frost so it has a chance to go to sleep and then wake up and grow nice and big and tall like it like they do. And do they grow uh, differently in different areas, I imagine? Like here, it's a bit colder. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the I wish actually I had some wood samples to show you, but I, I haven't unpacked those yet. Um, but yeah, they do grow differently. In um, Costa Rica, within six months, they had grown over 22 feet tall. Holy smokes. Yeah. It and actually is like having your own Jack and the Beanstalk. So if you have any little children in your life, you need to be able to go take them um, uh, to see an empress tree. How much care do they require? Well, because we are growing this not as an ornamental, but we're actually growing it for timber so that we can stop the destruction of old growth forests. So we're moving towards a plantation-based timber. So in essence, these farmers out there, they're actually growing a crop. So it's going to take care. You want to make sure that it has the right fertilizer. Depending on the area that you're growing it in, it's going to require um, irrigation. Um, so yeah, it, it's a crop. But it's a crop, actually, that's available to be harvested in 10 years. And the most amazing thing, not the most one of, again, the most amazing things about this tree is that when you chop it down, it actually regenerates from the stump up to seven times. Okay, so uh, in Australia, no, not Australia, in New Zealand, they have the cowrie tree, which grows wide. Mm -hmm. And then uh, here we have trees that go high. Mm -hmm. So what's it going to look like as a mature tree? Um, it's going to be t be dependent on how you've cultivated it. This is a tree, if you don't do anything to it, in 10 to 15 years is going to look like a great big oak or a maple. But we cultivate this tree for timber, so the farmer, again, um, because it is a crop, he has to go in each spring for the first couple of years and knock all the little nodes off the trees because those are your knots. And so we're actually growing telephone poles type trees. And so at the end of 10 years, how tall are they? Oh, you're going to look at a tree that's 40, 50, 60 feet tall. And you're going to have a butt log that's um, 18 to 25 inches or um, 18, 24 to 48 inches in diameter. Okay. So it does the majority of its growth actually in the first year. Yeah, it actually, um, in the first year, it can reach up words of 20 feet tall, again, depending on how cold it is. Um, the shorter the season, the the uh, shorter the tree will be. The longer the season, the bigger it gets. And um, in the first year, when it drops all it leaves, it looks a bit like you've just grown yourself a nice walking pole. <laughs> but don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> right now in Cedar, we have a, uh, a pole plantation, <laughs> but come spring, and I believe on June 9th, we're having a uh, tree planting party for the investors that have actually purchased a carbon offset program. Okay, so tell us about that. What's your offering? One acre will is um, uh, $3,000. 
and um, it is 110 trees that will actually offset your carbon footprint for the rest of your life. And um, actually, you know what? We have this 2018 offering has just gotten started. We have it stair-stepped. So um, the new offering actually in Canadian dollars is 2500 We are RRSP and TSFA approved. So if you'd like to put it in a tax-free savings account, um, you're also able to do that. But one acre sequesters enough carbon that you actually get to say, I've actually planted enough trees to offset my carbon footprint on the planet. And you have the potential to have a nice healthy return in 10 years if we sell the lumber at $3 a board foot. Are you getting uh, any interest from government on stuff like this? Um, We actually haven't approached the government yet. only because what we like, we were thinking of it when we first started it, but the reality is it was the individuals. All of the individuals kept coming to us and going, can I do this myself? Can I do this? Can I offset my families? Can I, off, you know, and there, we have people buying it for their grandchildren, for their children's college education. And it's, I like that this is not a government offered program this is this is something that you and I as an individual are saying we want to do this we want to make a difference without having the government control it for us Hmm. and so uh, how would they find out more information about this you would go to uh, world tree cop which is worldtreecop.com. You can actually buy the investment online through our portal that we have with Front Funder. And you can just do your entire investment online. Or uh, we find a lot of people actually like to call, you know, the office and talk to us. Um, Curtis is there to help you. Angela is there to help you, um, help you go through the whole step. We literally hold your hand the entire way. So if you've never done an investment, because sometimes it gets scary. Not everybody knows how to do this with their money. We will hold your hand, explain the whole program to Angela is amazing on the phone. So um, just call us and say, you know, I'd like to learn a little bit more about it. We do webinars. We have events. Um, y- yeah. Just so, so money does grow on trees. It does. Dang. She took that. <laughs> I like marketing ideas. No, don't you? I just, I just absolutely love it. I really do. Yes. So money really does grow on trees. So what is the number that they call? They would call, oh my goodness, they would call um, 888-693-8733. And then each um, department, you'll be prompted as to what uh, number that uh, you can dial. What's the number again? 888-693-8733. And it's worldtreecop.com. Correct. All right, so if you're interested in learning more and how you can give back to the environment, you can contact Wendy and she will put you in touch probably with Angela or other people at the office Mm -hmm. and explain how you can give back to the environment and make your mark for you or your children or your grandchildren and maybe leave a legacy. Absolutely. It is a wonderful legacy investment. And, um, you know, I, I... can't say enough that we are um, cutting down our forests at a rapid rate so the the ability to let mother nature know that we are truly on her side by helping restore the lungs of mother earth it it's it's a feel-good investment it's an impact investment and now is the time to make a difference because we need to okay Wendy you mentioned that it was three dollars a board foot uh what, which is your expected cost. So I'm thinking if somebody buys an acre of um, wood, right. so how does it work out? What, what are they going to end up with in 20 years when they harvest the wood? Okay, and um, it's actually in 10 years that we harvest. Oh, sorry, 10 years. Yeah, I know. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so let me do the math a little bit for you. I can walk you through it. Um, one acre produces approximately 30,000 board feet. If we were to sell it, because we don't know what 10 years, what the market's going to be, but if we sell it at the low end price of $3 a board foot, 
one acre will produce $90,000 worth of revenue. And remember, I told you the farmer, he gets 50%, and you, the investor, and World Tree split the other 45000 So it'll be 27500 That's at $3 a board foot. Although, having said that, right now in today's market, I can't find any Empress Wood at less than $7 a board foot. And I would like to add, the wealthiest people in the world have invested in timber. The timber is the only industry that over the last 100 years has outperformed the stock market. It has also, for the last 90 years, uh, performed 3% above inflation. So the idea that the, the price of lumber is going to go down when we're already showing massive shortages, the idea that this investment is actually going to go up in price, there's a good indication. We're not allowed to say if it will or it won't, but I think there's a pretty good indication. And um, so whatever you get, whatever we get, you get. So the, the potential return on investment 10 years down the road really is a, a wonderful investment for looking after the planet. Right, and looking after your, yourself and your kids. Exactly. It's like Mother Nature is going to reward you for looking after her financially. <laughs> <laughs> and who uh, is buying hardwood lumber? So I know softwood, softwood lumber goes to the States a lot, so that would be pine. What about um, hardwood? The hardwood lumber right now is probably, well, it's, it, it's actually, it's global, but um, it's the, actually the Asian market. Um, their um, uh, uh, importing of hardwood lumbers, they actually can't even find enough. I just actually got back from Singapore a couple of weeks ago, and their interest in the Empress lumber, because there's a whole bunch of attributes about it that, for instance, Empress wood is 40% lighter than other hardwoods, and it is 30% stronger than pine. So for us to be able, now we don't want to compete with the pine market, but we want to be able to have them stop cutting down the oaks and the maples and the mahoganies and use empress wood instead with it being so much lighter. Remember two transportation costs and fuel costs are going to be down. So it really is a green, green tree. Okay, great. Well, if you want more information, you can talk to Wendy at worldtreecop.com. And if you're more interested in Sydney, let me know. I'm Jane Johnston. I'm your host with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun. Coming up in the next few weeks is going to be our guest from the Daring Dash Hound. So you'll learn all about that. Remember, we are on Facebook, YouTube, and we're also on Stitcher, LinkedIn, iTunes and tune in. So tune in next time and welcome to the neighborhood. I'm Jane. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the neighborhood. We hope you have had some insight into West Coast living. If you know of someone or some place that should be highlighted in our podcast, we love to hear from you. Please go to VancouverIslandTime.com and click on our connect button. See you next week on Vancouver Island Time with Jane Johnston. Do you feel like you're drowning in administrivia? Do you have a podcast you would like transcribed to repurpose as a blog or even a best-selling book? Rhonda's Virtual Office is the answer to the freedom you crave so you can get busy doing what you love. Let Rhonda's Virtual Office give you the relief you need. Visit rondasvirtualoffice.com and get some peace of mind today. Rhonda's Virtual Office is the go-to transcription service for EWN Podcast Network.